But we don't just look at the conformations of ethane, which is an extremely simple molecule. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at butane, where one hydrogen on each of the carbons of ethane has been replaced by a larger group, a methyl group. Now, when we get to a longer chain like this, it becomes important to define which bond is rotating because we could rotate around this bond between carbons one and two, we could rotate around the bonds between carbons two and three, or we could rotate around the bonds between carbons three and four. And it turns out that those will have different potential energy changes and different energy profiles. So what we're going to first do when we look at conformations of a longer chain is we're going to define which bond is rotating. In this case, we're going to look at the bond connecting carbon two to carbon three. And the way that we indicate that is this. We write C2-C3. C2 representing carbon two of the chain, C3 representing carbon three. Now, when we do that and we draw Newman projections, it turns out that we get pictures that look like this. So, first of all, the Newman projections look very similar to those of ethane because, again, we have a front atom with three bonds attached. We have the back side of the rear atom, and then the bonds on the rear atom are blocked partially from our view, so they don't continue all the way to the center. What we also did here was we drew the methyl groups and we started them in a particular position. We didn't have to do that. We could really have started them anywhere. But in this particular example, I started with the methyl groups arranged 180 degrees apart from each other. And finally, I've circled the methyl groups in green so that they stand out as different from the hydrogens. So if we start rotating, what we see is that we have one conformation where these methyl groups are 180 degrees apart. We then rotate and we get an eclipse conformation where the front methyl group is eclipsing hydrogen and the back methyl group is eclipsing a hydrogen and then two of the hydrogens are eclipsing each other. Continuing to rotate we now get a staggered type conformation but in this staggered conformation the methyl groups are only 60 degrees apart. They're effectively adjacent to each other. Continuing to rotate, we then get a conformation where the methyl groups have a zero degree angle between them. They're eclipsing each other. And then the other two bonds have just hydrogens on them. So we have hydrogen eclipsing hydrogen, hydrogen eclipsing hydrogen. We then continue past and we again get a conformation where the methyl groups are staggered, but they're 60 degrees apart. So this conformation, which I have labeled E, is similar to this conformation, which I have labeled C. Finally, over here, as we continue rotating, we again get a conformation where a methyl group is eclipsing a hydrogen, a methyl group is eclipsing a hydrogen. So F and B are essentially similar. Putting this all together then, we have four different types of conformations here. We have two that are staggered. A, which we call the anti-conformation, where the two methyl groups are 180 degrees apart, and then C and E, which we call the gauche conformations. So this is a gauche conformation, and this is a gauche conformation. And in the gauche, the methyl groups are 60 degrees apart, but the conformation themselves are still staggered. We also have two types of eclipsed conformations. We have one, which we call the partially eclipsed, where the large methyl group on one atom is eclipsing a small group, like a hydrogen, on the other atom. We also have an eclipse conformation where the two large groups are lined up eclipsing each other. So, the one where the large group is eclipsing a small atom, we call the partially eclipsed. Those are conformations B and F. In contrast, the one where the two large groups are eclipsing each other, we call that the fully eclipsed. 
that's confirmation D. We're now going to look at the energy profile for butane, which is going to look different from the energy profile for ethane. We're going to start with conformation A, the anti-conformation. In this conformation, we have the least amount of steric interactions because this large methyl group is adjacent to two hydrogens, which are small. And this large methyl group is adjacent to two hydrogens, with, which are small. So there's the least amount of bumping in space. That's going to give it the lowest potential energy. Now, the next thing we're going to see in this energy profile is that eclipsed types of conformations are always higher in potential energy than staggered types. So as we rotate and create a partially eclipsed conformation, our energy is going to go up. And what I've done here is I've just sort of arbitrarily drawn a line here. All of the conformations above this line are going to be eclipsed. All the conformations which have potential energies before, below this line will be staggered. So we go up above the line, we get to a partially eclipsed. Now a partially eclipsed has higher amount of steric interactions than the anti, but they're not the highest amount because a large group will have less steric interference from a small group than it would with another large group. So the partially eclipsed are higher, but they're not the highest. We then come back down to another staggered, but this staggered is a gauche conformation where the two large groups are adjacent and they begin to bump into each other a little bit. This is going to raise the potential energy compared to the anti. Continuing on, we get to a fully eclipsed. This is going to have the highest amount of steric interactions, and therefore it should have the highest potential energy. We then come back down to another gauche. We go back up to another partially eclipsed, and then continuing on, we would get back to where we started. So you can see that the potential energy profile of, the, of butane is more complex than of ethane. However, it has many things in common. Staggered types are lower in energy than eclipse types. The more amount of, of steric interactions we have, the higher the overall potential energy. So these trends are summarized here. Staggered type conformations are always lower in energy than eclipse types. And conformations where the largest groups are far apart have a lower amount of energy than conformations where the larger groups are closer together. These two principles apply in general to conformations of many other molecules. And so in our homework, we're going to practice looking at other molecules and other bonds and seeing how their potential energy profile would change.